Okay, I want to thank everybody for joining. This is the United Against the Poverty Pandemic press conference. Uh, my name is Brett Bymaster. I'm the executive director at Healing Grove Health Center. Healing Grove Health Center is a health clinic, a faith-based health clinic in downtown San Jose, where our mission is to share the love of Jesus through health care, soul care, and culture care. Healing Grove Health Center works primarily with low-income Latinos, most of which have been deeply impacted by the COVID crisis. I want to share a little bit of data about how the COVID crisis is impacting low-income people of color here in Silicon Valley. Before COVID hit, there were 58,000 people living in extreme poverty, making less than $35,000 a year. Healing Grove Health Center completed a comprehensive survey uh, in October that found that there are more than 14,000 families here in Silicon Valley that are at imminent risk of becoming homeless when the eviction moratorium expires on January 1st, 2021. The total rent debt of extremely low income families in Silicon Valley, Santa Clara County, exceeds $117 million. We expect a wave of homelessness to hit when the eviction moratorium expires on January 31st. 14,000 families could be homeless. That's 30,000 children that could be on the streets. But I wanna say that it's possible for us to solve this problem, that we have the resources here in Santa Clara County to do something about it. Take a look at this. If everyone in Santa Clara County who makes more than the average median income chipped in just $730, we could erase that $117 million rent debt and declare Jubilee. What an incredible thing. You know, it is possible that there could be tens of thousands of people on the street in 2021 because people have lost their jobs as a result of the COVID pandemic shutdown. But it's also possible, Silicon Valley, that we could unite and come together against the poverty pandemic and make a difference. At Healing Grove Health Center, we are seeing the COVID surge. We've tested uh, thousands of low-income Latinos for COVID. Our current positivity rate is 28% compared to the countywide average of 5%. At Healing Grove Health Center, uh, we've, we've treated almost 900 people for COVID. We've had only six hospitalizations of the people who tested positive here at Healing Grove and zero deaths because of the intensive work that we're doing to support these families through the crisis. And so this coalition of government, faith, nonprofit and business leaders is coming together to unite against this poverty pandemic. Together, we can do this. We wanna call on Silicon Valley to make a sacrifice. We wanna call on Silicon Valley to solve this looming problem that could uh, result in tens of thousands of families suffering without a home and without a job. We can do this, Silicon Valley. Let's unite together to make a difference. We want to call on Silicon Valley to pray with boldness in the midst of this crisis. We want to call on Silicon Valley to give with radical generosity. And we want to call on Silicon Valley to employ in your homes and businesses, to give a job to a low-income displaced worker who's lost their job as a result of the COVID shutdown. Now, Healing Grove is committed to doing this work along with a number of other partners. We just uh, uh, released a survey that of COVID positive families who have sought aid through the COVID positive quarantine and isolation support system, only 18% of those families have actually been able to access that aid. At Healing Grove, we're excited to say that we are working on a partnership with the County of Santa Clara to be able to provide that aid. And I'm excited to say that that partnership is moving forward, but we need more help. We are excited to be partnering with some of the best organizations in Santa Clara County, like Destination Home, Sacred Heart, the City of San Jose, and the County of Santa Clara. And the panelists here are going to talk about some of the great work that's happening, some of the challenges that we have ahead, and the opportunity that we have to prevent homelessness in tens of thousands of families. And so with that, I want to invite the CEO of Icuro, Bip and Thomas, to speak. 
Uh, Bippin is um, uh, uh, the CEO of Ikura, which is an artificial intelligence company. And he's doing some great work to provide employment to low-income displaced workers. Bippin, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Brett. There is an increase in monthly poverty rates since the beginning of pandemic, and it is now getting worse. It causes a heightened need for employers and communities to step up and provide jobs to the displaced workers, especially the employers that are well positioned to launch new products and services during this pandemic has a real need to bring in an additional workforce. I see a significant need for new skills where people can be hired and trained to integrate with the existing organization across multiple industries. As you know, Icuro is a, a technology products company headquartered here in Santa Clara, and we are focused on developing new products and services unique to the sanitization needs of reopening offices, facilities, restaurants, schools, and many other commercial businesses. As the CEO of Ikiro, my primary role is to provide leadership in skill-based training and employment for low-income workers who lost their jobs due to COVID-19. We have already hired several such displaced workers to help with the assembly of these sanitizing robots right here in San Jose. Icuro collaborated with Work to Future a couple of months ago. Work to Future helps Santa Clara County residents to get skills and coaching that's necessary to help them find a new job to get a promotion or start a new career. They partner with employers to help them stay competitive and manage change with supportive as well as advisory services. They are an amazing process in place to connect talented people to take your business to the next level. By collaborating with Work to Future a few months ago, we have identified displaced workers who can be trained and deployed in building and testing these sanitizing technology products here in San Jose. These products eventually help with the reopening of the businesses, schools, restaurants, offices, facilities, and offer a safe, healthy, and a sustainable environment for all of us. I urge the business owners in our communities to get creative in identifying new opportunities for growth and employing displaced workers in their businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Bippin. Uh, next, we want to call on uh, Mayor Sam Licardo, who's done so much incredible work in uh, leading San Jose through the midst of this crisis. Fred, thank you. Thank you so much for your leadership and the incredible commitment of the so many community leaders uh, that have joined you, uh, united against this poverty pandemic. Look, I think we all knew uh, going into this pandemic well before we'd ever heard of coronavirus, that we've got a deeply, deeply widening gap uh, between those who are able to survive amid the rising housing costs and all the other challenges of living in this valley uh, and those who are struggling just to keep their head above water. We know that this pandemic has just deepened that chasm and has widened it further. And I am so grateful that community leaders like Brett and so many others are stepping up, particularly in the faith community, to say that, look, we know government can't do it alone. There's a lot we're trying to do here at the city. I know that uh, our partners at the county and, and Supervisor Ellenberg will tell us more about the extraordinary work they're doing. We're all stepping up in lots of ways, but it's only a drop in the bucket of the need that we know exists in our county. So here at the city of San Jose, we're distributing more than two and a half million meals a week to families in need. Uh, we've committed more than $22 million of funding, particularly from federal sources to address uh, the needs of struggling families through the Silicon Valley Strong Initiative. And we've raised another 20 million more with the leadership of folks like Jennifer Loving and Chuck Robbins 
and we're going to keep doing more. But again, we know that this is just a drop in the bucket. And so as with all endeavors, uh, we know we can't win this game for survival and to help our entire community thrive if we've got half the players sitting on the bench. We need everybody on the field. And I am so grateful that the faith community continues to step up in so many ways as they are now in leading this United Against Poverty pandemic. We look forward to doing whatever we can to support the efforts of community leaders who recognize the need that we need to meet in this moment. Thank you. And please let me know how I can help you, Brett, and your team in the days ahead. Thank you so much, Mayor Licardo. Uh, we are so grateful for your leadership. Next, we're gonna to turn to uh, Santa Clara County District 4 Supervisor, Susan Ellenberg. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And Brett, thank you so much for your organizational leadership in this critical work. This is a critical moment in our community response to COVID-19. We are now in our 10th month of restrictions on economic and social activity, and we are seeing the highest levels of cases and hospitalizations to date. No one is arguing the severity of our current situation. The surge we are witnessing is very real. COVID-19 has impacted every member of our community, but low wage workers, people of color, and our most vulnerable residents have shouldered a dramatically disproportionate share of both the health and economic burdens. We are all called upon to work tirelessly and to take action to meet this moment. As individuals, we must act by wearing masks, maintaining social distance, and yes, foregoing cherished opportunities to gather with our loved ones. As community leaders, we must act in partnership and with urgency to meet the needs of those who have been most directly impacted by this pandemic. As a county supervisor, I'm proud of the dedication and resilience of our county public health and health system responders, but I know that we must continue to strive to do more, to do better. In my eyes, there are three key areas in which we as a county can and must do better. First, we must improve collaborative communication and transparency with all of our partners in this response, including government, business, nonprofit, and faith communities. Second, we must extend loans and supports to businesses, especially small locally owned businesses to survive this crisis and maintain employment for the families that depend on them. And finally, we must provide financial supports to our low income neighbors who test positive and of whom we ask to stay home from work in order to keep the rest of us safe. We cannot expect infected residents to stay home from work if they don't have the resources to pay rent or feed their children, and we cannot expect our community to lower transmission levels if we're not making sure that infectious residents are able to isolate. The county has partnered with several cities, most notably the city of San Jose in this effort, but we have much more work to do to maximize the impact of this resource. Tomorrow, the Board of Supervisors will consider a referral that I'm introducing with Supervisor Chavez to call on the county to extend and improve the isolation quarantine supports program with an emphasis on reducing delays in processing and expanding partnerships with community-based organizations to support the residents that trust them. If we are to continue to ask the greater Santa Clara County community to be our partner, we must do better. We must include them in every step we take to fight this virus. And we must provide adequate supports, both for individuals to isolate after testing positive and for businesses that have made Herculean efforts to constantly pivot, innovate and adjust to ensure their survival nearly always at their own expense and significant sacrifice. Because of partnerships with our community, we were able to stem the rising tides through most of the summer months. And without their continued partnership now, we will not be successful in gaining control of the current surge. Thank you again to everyone who is joining us today to hear these important messages and join us in action. Thank you, Supervisor Ellenberg, for your leadership. And I look forward tomorrow to seeing uh, the referral that you wrote along with Supervisor uh, Chavez on the quarantine and isolation support, which I think is a critical component 
And I'm grateful for your leadership in making sure that that is a prioritized component. Uh, do we have council member Maya Asparza? Oh, actually, uh, I'm sorry. I'll call on uh, Pastor Finney Abraham next to represent the faith community and the work that we're doing through, through the United Against the Poverty Pandemic effort. Oh, thank you, uh, Brett. From the beginning of uh, Shelter in Place, faith communities throughout Santa Clara County have continued to step out in their calling to love our city and love our neighbors. Being at the forefront of helping people who are adversely affected by the pandemic, we know clearly that poverty in our community is real. It has always been there, but the pandemic brought the issue further into the light. Since March of this year, when Shelter in Place began, many faith communities in our network stepped up to provide food for those who are in need, generously help with the rent backlog, address and meet the needs of students, uh, encourage employers in our community to hire more and to hire local, and uh, continue to care for the homeless, the elderly, and the marginalized in our community. This is our calling from our sacred scriptures. As it is written in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Jesus says, whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it for me. We want to live out this compassion in our community during this time of need. The compassion and the generosity of faith communities are needed now more than ever. And we are committed to stay on course and do whatever it takes to love our city during this time. I just wanna encourage all faith communities to join us in this effort as we stand united against the poverty pandemic. Thank you. Thanks, Finney. And along with Finney, we wanna call on the faith community to practice generosity. Um, and we're so grateful for the churches that are getting on board and really prioritizing making sure that tens of thousands of families don't become homeless in 2021. Next, I want to invite uh, District 7 San Jose Council Member Maya Esparza to speak. Maya, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I am uh, the District 7 representative, proud to represent Healing Grove. And uh, I also just want to thank Healing Grove for everything that they're doing in the community. And I especially would like to thank our partners at the county, uh, Supervisors Ellenberg and Chavez, for their much needed leadership right now as uh, this pandemic is hitting our communities even harder. I am so appreciative of, of their leadership and everyone's willingness to step up even more. Um, so I represent District 7, which represents not only the hardest hit zip code in the county, the 95122, but I also represent several other zip codes that are the hardest hit in the county. Um, COVID and the resulting economic hardships um, are hitting low income minority communities the hardest. And people are getting sick and dying at much higher rates than the rest of the city and the county. For example, Latinos represent 25% of the population in Santa Clara County, while representing nearly 57% of COVID cases. Also employment rates in San Jose for jobs paying over $60,000 have decreased only 3%, while employment rates for jobs paying under $27,000 have decreased by 25%. And these facts shine light on these vastly different impacts in these communities during this pandemic. It truly is a tale of two cities. And inequities that were already stretching our communities to the breaking point before the pandemic are now an existential threat, literally, for thousands of families right here in San Jose. And so understanding the depth and the severity of this crisis, we must not only focus our resources to support the communities that are hardest hit, we have to do everything that we can to ensure that the available resources are reaching those communities. And that's what equity means in a time of crisis. Our community just cannot accept leaving our vulnerable residents in a position where they must choose between providing 
for their families and risking exposing other members of the community with COVID-19 because they have no option but to go to work. So I just wanna thank everyone today for standing together and bringing awareness of the inequities our communities face and thanking the faith community for stepping up and offering a helping hand, supporting our neighborhoods, supporting individuals and families. And if you have the ability, please donate uh, and help and do what you can right now. I think the need has never been greater. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Esparza. Uh, we are so grateful for your leadership. We are proud to have you as our uh, Council Member Representative here in District 7. And uh, your comments are so on. Uh, it is such a big need. Next, I want to call on the District 10 Councilman, uh, Johnny Thomas, who has been an integral leader in the United Against the Poverty Pandemic Movement. Johnny? Thank you. And I also want to thank all my colleagues and, and esteemed uh, representatives from, from the county and, of course, our city and our mayor. Uh, they have said so many important things in, in our uh, religious leaders. Uh, this is a pandemic, a poverty pandemic. And are reminded of the story about a young boy walking on the beach who came across a bunch of starfish that had been washed up on the shore and stranded. He was so moved with compassion that he began to toss them back into the ocean one by one. There was no way he could save them all, but he could save some. And COVID's led to a massive unemployment in our hospitality and travel businesses, causing thousands of employees and small businesses to be stranded without resources. And government can't help everyone that needs help uh, from this pandemic. There's no amount of federal funds or stimulus money or unemployment dollars that can help every family get out on, and out on their feet. Getting people back to work is the fastest and most dignified way to protect families from falling into homelessness. And, and here are some steps that all of us can take to make a difference in the poverty pandemic. Number one, consider employing a house cleaner or a gardener. Two, if you have a business, take on subsidized trainees through our program and buy from your local small restaurants and small businesses and tip generously. You could log on to povertypandemic.org and be part of the solution. You could learn about all these programs and how you can make a difference on our website. Much like that little boy, if, if we all do something, it can make a huge difference. And together we can prevent the poverty pandemic. Thank you all for tuning in. And I think we're gonna be able to take questions by raising hands if somebody raises their hands. Yeah, if, if anyone has questions, please go ahead and raise your hand now and uh, you will be welcome to answer one of our, ask one of our panelists a question. I wanna say that now is a critical moment and we have an opportunity to prevent tremendous human suffering. And we wanna call on Silicon Valley to pray for boldness. We wanna call on Silicon Valley to give with radical generosity. We wanna call on Silicon Valley to employ in your homes and businesses. Hire an extra janitor, hire a house cleaner, hire a gardener. When you go out to eat, double and triple tip. This is our opportunity. If you're interested in giving, we'd love to encourage you to make a donation. You can go to povertypandemic.org and there's a way to make a donation there. 100% of those funds will go to either providing employment opportunities to people or providing direct rent assistance in partnership with our many partners. And so with that, I'll open it up for, for questions for anyone that has questions. Not seeing any questions. Uh, would any of the panelists like to have, uh, is there something else that you wanted to say? Would you like to have a closing word? Did, did anybody um, put questions on the Facebook Live perhaps? Uh, no, I don't see any. Right. could you talk in a little bit more detail about the, the giving piece? Um, what is the, the financial entity or institution that is receiving the donations, how are the funds distributed? If anything has been raised to date, um, 
how much has been raised and what is the time goal to do this? And it's something, an effort I would be glad to be part of and help. Yeah, thanks, Supervisor Ellenberg. Uh, um, Healing Grove is the largest partner in the COVID emergency homeless prevention program that's being administered by Sacred Heart and Destination Home. Through that program, we've already distributed more than $2 million. Starting on Wednesday, we will open an emergency operations center whose purpose is to be able to provide funds to low-income families uh, who have lost their job and are behind on rent. Uh, we expect to distribute up to another $3 million through that program. Um, those, uh, th those funds have, uh, there, there are already 800 families that have been selected to receive those funds. After those 800 families are processed in our emergency operations center, those funds will be exhausted. And so the need is huge. Uh, what Healing Grove is doing is raising private money that will be used to supplement those Funds. The funds that we currently have are th uh, through CARES Act um, that have come through the, the generosity of the city and the county and the federal government, um, uh, but those funds just aren't enough. And so the money will be used for two different things. Uh, Healing Grove will distribute money directly to families in need that weren't able to receive money through the Destination Home and Sacred Heart efforts. And then second, we will be funding a program at City Team that will help low-income displaced workers get a higher paying job, so to provide job training. So the two things that the monies will be used for is to provide uh, rent and direct financial assistance to families that will become homeless when the eviction moratorium expires. And the second thing is to provide job training to help families who've been displaced and need a new job or a new career to find employment. And the particular goal of $730 from every resident um, earning more than $200,000 uh, in a year, I think is a critical piece that should be highlighted and blasted and shared, I'm serious, all over um, this county. And, and let's create a, a domino impact because that makes the goal very tangible, very specific. You can see what the outcome will be of your piece of $730 in the hole. Is That's there a plan to, to further publicize and promote? I know this is a great vehicle. I'm wondering what else is happening. Well, we'd love to encourage people to go to povertypandemic.org, make a donation and share about it on Facebook. You're right, If it, just to put numbers on it, if the 160,000 families in Santa Clara County that make above the average mean income gave $730, that would raise $120 million, enough to set the poor free. What an exciting opportunity. I think sometimes we, uh, we expect the federal government to bail us out um, and, and um, uh, to come in and help us. And, and that's something that we would invite. That's something that we need. But the reality is that we have the resources right here in Santa Clara County. And so we would like to ask Silicon Valley to step up in radical generosity, you know, giving $500 or $1,000 for families that have a job. It probably will feel a little bit painful, but it's doable. But that can keep uh, children out of homelessness. You know, what it, how is exciting is that to be able to give $1,000 and know that that $1,000 just prevented a family from becoming homeless? I hope that that is something that every individual in our community who has the capacity to do so um, uh, undertakes in the, next, in the next couple of weeks before the end of their calendar year. And, and you're right, the, the deadline is looming. The January 31st eviction moratorium is, is coming soon. And so there, there, there is urgency uh, for these funds to get out to, to families in need. Are there any other comments from our panelists? Thank you for having us and, and good luck to everybody out there. I know that a lot of people, I've, I've actually been getting texts from media outlets saying that they're covering restaurants going on a business story right now. And, um, and I just got two texts from two different media outlets. And I think that this is all related. A lot of people are losing their jobs due to the hospitality industry uh, kind of being forced shut. Um, and, um, and I think it's, uh, it's just tragic and we need to do all, all our parts. Thank you. And I, I would highlight the personal care industry as well, which is now entirely uh, shut down, both, both indoors and outdoors. And that 
represents a tremendous number of very small business, primarily women and immigrant uh, owned, and um, it, it's a financial disaster. And I'd like to add, um, representing some of the communities that are hardest hit by COVID, both health-wise and economically, these are the same neighborhoods. These are the same families. Um, I personally know several people who have passed away due to COVID. Um, and uh, these families are dealing with so much. Anything that our community can do to help and step up and make a difference. Um, I know that uh, it's a tough time for, it's all, for us all, but please know that there are some folks out there who are really suffering and anything that you can do can help. Thank you. Well, as, as we wrap this up, uh, a recording of this will be available at bit.ly slash ppmedia2020, and I'll share that link. I would encourage everybody to share this with media outlets so that we can make sure that this gets, uh, gets the coverage that it deserves because it's such a, a critical and urgent matter. Um, and um, I want to thank all you guys for uh, uh, fantastic men and women who are leading our community through this crisis. I'm proud to say that we have a panel that is as diverse as our community, um, representing all sorts of, of different people from different faith backgrounds and uh, different cultural and racial backgrounds. Uh, and uh, it, it, it makes me proud to see us coming together in this way to do what we know is right. So thank you all so much. Thank you all very much. Take care, thank you. wear your masks, stay home. <laughs> thank you, be, and be safe. safe. And Brett, thank you again for your tremendous leadership here. Thank you, Susan.